All right, so now it's a matter of removing the case bolts. So we've got four around the oiler right in the center here. There's one over here on the side. And that should be it because we've removed the bolt up here for the dogs. So we're going to start trying to do this by hand. And if they don't crack right away, then we may have to coax it using an impact driver. Yeah, these are in there. Usually they crack by now. I think they were over tightened or put in with pretty good sealant. We will find out here. That one's loose. That one's loose. 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 All right, we're done. Case bolts don't look too bad. We'll probably try and reuse them. I definitely don't see that any of them have bent from any catastrophic accident or anything like that involving maybe a tree hitting it during a felling operation. All right. So we... And I did miss one more right in there. That's also a case bolt. So we end up with a total of seven case bolts, if you include the one with the dog. Tell you what, it's nice having a magnetic bit holder to grab those screws all right so we are now ready to split the case Okay, so you can see what I'm doing there, lining the rod and then aligning the center here, that point right on the end of the shaft. And then I'm going to double check to make sure that The facing of those puller arms are going to be flush against the case and the edge of the race. I also want to make sure that this tool is kept relatively level and flush.
All right, and now this is going to entail a little bit of pressure here. And I may have to take a soft metal or hard plastic mallet. Just give it a couple little love taps. And then I should be able to get this split. If you don't succeed right away, it's always a good idea just to double check that you didn't miss any case bolts. All right, we are good. Pretty tight here. <clears throat> and I can see it starting to split. So we are we are getting there. <clears throat> I'm gonna back off it here just for a second because I don't like the looks of this handle it appears as though it's coming in from a maybe a slight angle so I'm gonna have to maybe raise this up a little bit retighten it Yeah, I can see it splitting back here, but not through the rest of the chassis.
All right, so we got our splitter on here. There, and she popped. And uh, once she comes, it should be pretty easy. I did have a little difficulty on the, doing this on the flywheel side. And the shaft on that side is a little bit smaller and probably maybe not as robust. So I decided to move over to the clutch side and uh, voila. Okay, here's our alignment pin there. There should be another one, which is on this side of the case. And looks like, yeah, you can see that this gasket was in, didn't look like it was in the best shape around the oiler there. And, you know, these bearings are, you know, they're not shot, but I don't, and I'm real enamored with their uh, appearance. See that bearing was flush with the case. So is that one on the inside, which is interesting because All right, let's finish up on this side. Again, I'll take the rod, pop it in that slot. You'll have to kind of press to slide the arms over the rod. Line that up with your center of the shaft. Make sure your tool is as flush as possible and then drive it home. So I'm doing this to remove the drive shaft. This is the side I had some difficulty popping the drive shaft off. Yeah, and she doesn't want to go. Did you hear that crack? That was a pretty good crack. It popped loose under pressure. And now she's coming nice and easy. Um, it's be interesting to take a look at the bearing pocket here. Once we get everything disassembled. All right, I thought maybe the bearing had popped free, but it didn't. That's usually the way it works. Sometimes they'll pop loose from the case and remain on the drive shaft or the crankshaft. That's minor scuffing from the case splitter, not a big deal. So a fair amount of cleanup to do on the inside of the crankcase. Clean up the gasket material. You want to move your rod perpendicular to the bearing in there to see if there's any play. Inspect the inside of the top end of the arm. Make sure there isn't any obvious scoring and uneven wear. Make sure you don't have any bluing indicating overheating of the crank itself. Basically, this is a good crank. I'm gonna use some Scotch-Brite with some penetrant oil and uh, just gonna clean up uh, 
the spots where you could see the edge of the outer race of the bearing, the edges of the crank seal and of the flyway on this side be a similar process here. You can see that as I pulled it off, it left a couple really minute marks. I think those are gonna buff out with the scotch bright. You can't even feel them. But you wanna make sure that there's nothing major there. Otherwise, that could act as a conduit for air and you'd have could have a problem with your crank seals and if you suspect that there's too much scoring then you're you have no choice but to replace the crankshaft which is a pretty expensive part all right so i just noticed something here's the flywheel side so clearly that has a pocket for the bearing to come up against when it's installed. And on the clutch side, it also is the same way. So that makes the bearings, installing them pretty easy on the, into the case, if you like doing it that way, which I kind of do. But the other thing you might remember on this one is that... Uh, I mentioned that the crank seal was about three and a half, kind of give or take, millimeters recessed from the surface of the crank, which would be that orange ring there. And you can see that the inner race of the bearing comes really close to the edge of the pocket here. And... Uh, the seal is really close to that bearing. So I am not going to go with 394 service manual recommending a five millimeter recess. I'm going to go with three and a half and use the crank fitting tool since it fits in that pocket perfectly um, to recess that bearing or that bearing seal so that I can uh, keep it far enough away from the crank bearing that it doesn't cause any issues and end up causing lots of leaks and so forth.